Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is a hilarious individual, once a professional athlete, a mixed martial artist who fought in the UFC with 11 victories. 11 times he stepped into a cage with another man and beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> He then retired and started dominating the podcast world and the stand-up comedy world. He has two podcasts, The King and the Sting, The Fighter and the Kid. Ladies and gentlemen, hailing from Hollywood, California, Brendan Shaw. Legit intro, man. <laughs> I try my best, man. Just Legit bring a little energy. Legit intro. I'll hey, take it. I just try to let you know I did a little bit of research A little bit of research, man. <laughs> Dang, look at you guys. That is all the intro is trying to do, is just explain that I did a little bit of research and I feel pretty good about Respect. it. Respect. I've been a fan of yours for a long time on the internet. Same, man. I, Same. I like a lot uh, when professional athletes decide, A, now granted, the story behind Rogan and Callan kind of... Uh, helping you with your decision, but transitioning into the entertainment world is not an easy one. And then watching you has been a lot of fun. Oh, thanks, brother. Same thing. Long time coming. I, you and I have been trying to link up for a while. And yeah, I think whatever you do, I always support, man. You see me on your Instagram, yeah. liking everything, slitting your girl's DMs. So the thing is, <laughs> uh, fiance, please. Sorry, fiance. sorry. Oh, oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's slitting right. my fiance. Slitting fiance. He said, congrats. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the only one, I assume. <laughs> oh, it dude, happens, love. man. Yeah, love, love, dude. Love forever. Yeah, but uh, same thing, man. I, I feel like we're cut from the same cloth, and uh, yeah, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, I enjoy watching you. You just had a special uh, on Showtime. You were doing your media run there, and I tried to slide in a time I in know. the middle of it. It didn't work out. I know. Uh, but I'm excited that you're here in Indianapolis now doing your tour uh you last week so we missed it already i, I wish know. we could have promoted it hey if he ever comes back to indianapolis go watch him yeah, the guy is you. funny <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let's talk about your life let's do it i didn't know you were a lacrosse player uh, yeah i love lacrosse man love i had a real deep passion for lacrosse sport of the future where'd you grow up at uh denver colorado I did not know lacrosse was west of Pennsylvania. I had no idea that it even existed out there. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> it's not not the biggest game in Denver, Colorado, but uh, it was it was pretty good when I was there, man. I loved lacrosse, and that led to a football. Uh, no, fo football was from day one. Football when I I started playing when I was four. And, you know, all the way through, had a cappuccino with the Buffalo Bills. So I played football for a long time. <laughs> yeah, and then you went into the Arena League. What position did you play in football? Uh, in in college, I played at University of Colorado. I was a H back like fullback. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Just run your head into people. Bunch of CT. <laughs> <laughs> Real bummer. And then, uh, yeah, and then with the Buffalo Bills, a, 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 like you said, a, a cappuccino. And, uh, yeah, but it's not easy there. to get into those camps. It's, it's something that needs to be remembered. They don't just sign up dummies out there. I mean, granted, isn't that that's one way to look at? It. Yeah, I think it depends. I think if you would have told me when I was like four, like, hey, dude, you're gonna get a, you're gonna have a shot with the Buffalo Bills. Like, you're crazy. That'd mm -hmm. be awesome. But now it's like, God, that was a failure. You know, yeah. it just depends how you look at it. I mean, maybe a failure because you didn't make your ultimate goal, which I assume would be an All Pro H back or whatever, and becoming a Super Bowl champion. But the the percentage of humans that get to accomplish that and the amount of circumstances that have to fall correctly is so small. I know. So I, I think hindsight, you should have a much more positive outlook than you did maybe as a four-year-old. Uh, as I'm getting older, <laughs> I'm, I'm like that. Same with same with my UFC career. It's like, well, I never won the world championship, so that was a failure. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. So let's dive into that. Let's you do you do the you go to university. You went to a small school, transferred to Colorado. Yes, went to Whittier College in California, where phenomenal lacrosse. We we're number one uh, in the nation at the time, and then left there. Went to University of Colorado, walked on there, and then earned a scholarship, and then played three years at University of Colorado. Congrats. Success story, I would, some would say. <laughs> right there, by the way. Don't, don't look at it as a failure. Got your school paid for. Hello. You're using that now. Obviously, you're using all your education you learned in Colorado. Thank God I went to class. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the Buffalo Bills, uh, get released from them. You go to the Arena League for a little bit. Yes. Decided that is a terrible business. Probably shouldn't do that. You're some would say the worst. <laughs> <laughs> the way those things operate. Oh, my God. I was like, how much am I getting paid? <laughs> Only if you win, too. You Only know? if you will. Like, this is awful. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, you got Real 40. Real incentive to win, though. Dude, you got 45 people watching, too. You got walls that you can potentially run into now in the middle of the field, and you're making no money. Arena this was league. not the dream. This was not the dream. <laughs> I mean, there's people that play it because they still love the game. I appreciate and respect it, and I'll try to give them a rating every time it's on TV. I'll like, turn it on before I take a shit and then come back, so I try to give them a rating so they get their money up. But, boy, the people that are doing Arena, you got to really appreciate their amount of love for football. They love the football out there. Do they love the football, or do they have no other options, and that's that's it? You I know? mean, we can look at it positively. <laughs> <laughs> they love yeah. the football. Yeah. Uh, so after that, it was like a two-year it was like a two-year window there before the Ultimate Fighter happens. Yes. Were you trying to figure out your life? You didn't know after Arena League? You're like, fuck, what am I going to do? Trying to figure out how selling uh, supplements door-to-door, like Pursuit of Happiness style. I had a briefcase. I'd go door-to-door selling supplements. But I, I, when oh, I, oh, oh, what were they? They were, it was like creatine and protein powder. Let me hear it. Hello? <laughs> okay, you ready? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, what the fuck's going on, bub? <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> I was a lot better before some fucking meathead just showed up at my door, but yeah, things sh- are... Sure, you, you could be a lot better if you try some of these supplements. Let me just show you what I have. Can I come in for a second? No. And then- <laughs> okay, you know what? Fuck this. <laughs> That's a hard job. That is a grind. Tough job. You're cold calling people, but showing up at their house. Especially when you're a giant human. Yeah. I would go door to door, and then I'd go into gyms, and I'd, I'd just sit there with my briefcase, and I'd wait for someone to come up to me, and I would look at someone working out or, like, hitting mitts, or, and I'd be like, I can make him 1% better. <laughs> <laughs> I go, how? I go, how? Do you have some time? <laughs> sit down. It never worked out. Bro, I was the worst salesman a ever. A meathead Jehovah's Witness, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what a wild life. It was awful, man. But I was when I was doing that, so I'd do that during the day. Then at night, I would uh, train. I'd do jiu-jitsu and boxing. Yeah, because your dad, big time uh, martial artist. Yep, yep. You did your research, man. Yeah, black belt in taekwondo. And he oh, didn't I want me you. fighting, but... Um, you know, coming from football, I needed something to kind of take up that space, and I just had a knack for, for fighting, unfortunately. And at this time, I think the Ultimate Fighter was kind of starting to really get going, yeah. right? So just I, starting to get going. Just it, starting to get going. So I was selling supplements, living with my brother. Wasn't making any money, uh, living with my brother. And then uh, it just started taking off. Then I, I started training uh, with, like, this really big guy named Shane Carwin, who eventually oh, yeah. became UFC heavyweight champion. But he only had two fights. We were the only two big guys in the gym. So me and him would train nonstop together. And training, by the way, is now, granted, a man that you have fought before and uh, defeated, Matt Matreon, trains here in Indianapolis. Love Matt, yeah. And Chris Lytle trains here in Indianapolis. Monsters. And when Matreon's training for a fight, him and Lytle literally wake up every morning, go into this little fucking pit hellhole down here in the hood here in Indianapolis. It has pads. You've done it with him. And I've done it with him two times. And they just beat the fuck out of each other. They, they literally go in there and just beat the fuck out of yeah, each other. Yeah, they go hard. They go hard. Chris Lytle walks out of there with a black eye every day. Terrible job. Terrible <laughs> job. So you having to do this against the world champ, I couldn't even fathom. You Every day you walk in, they're like, okay, I got to fight the, a potential world champion here. Awful. And he was so much bigger than me, but he, he was like a big brother and he just whooped my ass every day. Um, and then, But uh, listen, at the time, I'm selling supplements door to door, and I knew I was athletic, and I'd watch the guys, on, especially in the heavyweight division in the UFC, I'm like, God, I know I can beat some of those guys. If I just focus, I'm so much more athletic in my work ethic. I bet I could get pretty far. Didn't think I'd get as far as I did. I was like, but I, it's better than slanging supplements door to door. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, yeah, so started training. And then uh, probably six months into training, uh, Shane Carwin goes, hey, man, there's uh, Golden Gloves boxing tournaments next week. I go, that's cool. And he goes, oh, we signed you up for it. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> so my dad didn't want me fighting at all. And I told my dad, I go, Dad, I'm doing Golden Gloves next week. I had no idea. I didn't really train for it. I've been, just been training with Shane. And I go, I'm doing Golden Gloves next week. He wanted me to just work on my my degree and whatever that. So uh, I go, if I lose this, I'll, I won't no more fighting. I'm done. I'll go whatever you want me to do. And you know? he says, deal. Deal. He shows up front row. <laughs> front row. Uh, they don't put me in the I because I had no fights. So and they didn't put me in the B class. They put me in the A class with guys with a lot of fights. So these guys are monsters. I go in there. I'm so nervous. And uh, it was uh, three two minute rounds. And I ended up winning the whole thing. All knockouts. Wow. So you're a Golden Gloves <laughs> all champ? knockout. Yeah, all knockouts. <laughs> and so I get. Oh, but this is the best part. So it's it's super hoodie in there. Like I'm the only white guy. It's all Mexican and black kids, right? I'm the only white guy. And they're taping my hands. But you're taping your hands with the crowd around you. Like everyone's everyone's family kids mm. are running it's by. It's like a movie. It, it 
Yeah, like sad movie. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're taping my hands, and my dad's like right there. And my dad's not used to like fight game. He's looking around. He's like, what? and this giant, um, this giant black guy walks by, and who I was fighting in the championships. He was an army champion, giant black dude. Walks by, and my dad goes, Jesus Christ! <laughs> he goes, who's fighting him? I go, Dad, that's that's my, that's that's my opponent. And my dad goes, Oh, we should leave. <laughs> he goes, we should leave. I go, I can't, Dad. I have to fight that guy. And so I get up, beat that, knocked him out uh, in the second round. And then when I get done, my dad's like, all right, let's see what happens. Oh, so that was kind of like he was the... Like, let's see. But he was like, let's, you're, a, you're a moron, but let's see what happens. <laughs> and then probably six months, after, maybe four months after that, for my, my sign up for my first MMA fight, and uh, were you in like a uh, like a basement? Was it like a shitty? Chris Lytle tells this incredible story of his first MMA fight was in this dungeon basement where basically it wasn't even a cage; like it was just like club? roped off. Yeah, it was roped off with some mm -mm. shady promoters. No. Different animal. No, it, in my career, whole career, whether it's entertainment or fighting or football, what I've always it. I just get thrown to the fucking wall. So deep, deep. Get thrown they in the me deep. right with the big dog. So right away, my first fight, Broomfield Event Center, um, you know, whatever, 3,600 people sold out on the first fight of the night. Everyone's there because it's very it's very close to where I played college football. So that whole crowd. Oh, come. here we go. So Let's sold go out. Buffs. Yep. My mom drives and hour and a half to get there I knocked the guy out in 16 seconds and I what did you do a flying knee just a straight, <laughs> I, I think I knocked him out like 36 seconds but it was like it's just straight right hand some fat guy <laughs> it's not that impressive it, you know but I get done in my I'm in the back of my mom goes that that was fun that's cool so how many more you got tonight I was all that's it mom that's it she goes <laughs> Oh, wow. She never saw me fight again. <laughs> I drove yeah, like, an hour and a yeah. half for 30 seconds. For you to seconds. beat up this fat guy with titties. <laughs> <laughs> so then you get into the Ultimate Fighter. So I'm doing that. Uh, Ultimate Fighter uh, calls. Was that the what season? Of, of season 10. 10. Biggest season they ever had. Yeah, because. That was my big break. Were you fighting. the first heavyweights? Uh, the first season was the first heavyweights, and then we're the, the season 10 that I was on is mm. the most watched uh, series of all time. Yeah. I will say I did watch it. Rashad uh, Rampage, yeah. and then we had Kimbo Slice on there. Roy Nelson, Kimbo, Kimbo Slice. That was what was guy. Kimbo like? Amazing dude, just such a good dude. People say so many positive things because Kimbo, obviously, everybody remembers from dial-up internet, getting on the internet, <laughs> waiting for Kimbo to beat the fuck out of somebody oh, in the backyard. So Maybe him being a porn bouncer for a little bit. Kimbo had all these incredible things throughout my entire childhood, and then he gets into the real fight game. Was like, okay, Kimbo Slice is really doing it. But all you hear is positive things uh, about and, Kimbo Slice, uh, and so I. I remember watching him on YouTube and then uh, the the house is always 16 guys and you have no idea who's going to be on it. You just, when you get into the house, you, I saw 15 guys. I'm like, well, who's the 16th dude? And Dana's like, you guys ready for the 16th guy? And we're all like, everyone's a legit fighter there. And uh, how many fights have you had at this point? Uh, I had uh, two. Before that? Oh, good. Two fat guys. So <laughs> I just call it two fat guys, dude. Two titties. Uh, so uh, we're waiting, and he made such a big deal on it. I saw Roy Nelson, who's a former world champion, and he had like 40 fights. I had By the way, fat guy. Fat, tough fat guy. Tough, yeah. <laughs> skilled, tough, skilled, tough fat guy. The toughest fat guy. The toughest fat guy of all time. People yeah. would say. So, yeah, and he was a former world champion, had over 30 fights. I have two, so I'm like, well, that's that's not good. And I'm looking around, and uh, I'm like, I wonder who it is. It's gonna be some big name, like tough, like a Fedor or something like that, or some huge, experienced guy. And they brought in Kimbo Slice. And then what sucks is, and I think it rubs some people the wrong way. Is right when they bring you in, I knew him just as Kimbo Slice, the backyard brawler. Mm -hmm. it, the camera zooms on me. I go, oh fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the world got introduced to Ben Job. In quotes, it puts, fuck that guy. I'm like, ah, oh, man. But then uh, we got into the house, and we were on opposite teams, but I would, I just, I, there's something about him. I well, it's hard not to. I gravitated towards Kimbo Slice, not because he's a badass or not, but he was such a good person, man. He told the best stories. He was a family guy, and he was just trying to make money, and he was so humble. He'd be in the house. He'd be like, God, hopefully it doesn't go to the ground, man. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing down there. So we'd be on the ground in the living room trying to help him with jujitsu and show him if you get caught down here, and he was a great guy. That's man. awesome. Yeah, passed away. So Yeah, yeah. rest in rest peace, peace. Kimbo yeah. Slice. Thanks for all the... Minutes of entertainment. Hall of Famer, man. I think you should be in the UFC Hall of Fame. All right, me too. Yeah. I just 
Stri- I don't know for what he did in the UFC, but for well, his I'm, fighting history, I I'm, think I'm, he should be. Yeah, just for his fighting history. Yeah, I for, think so, what, what too. What he did for the game, he should be in the Hall of Fame. He I popped agree. that one guy's eyeball out. In the oh, back. Yeah. yeah. Magnificent. Him and that cop in that padded room that one day. Oh. That, that like cop a, beat him up, right? It, it was yeah. a war. Remember he grabbed him? Oh, it was a war. Yeah. Though. It was a, watching Kimbo Slice walk into somebody's backyard like, oh, fuck, <laughs> you fucking ready, bro? <laughs> it was awesome. Also it, terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Yes. when he would drop his hands and let the other guy just start blasting him in the face. Here, here's, it's all all you got. here's the thing about Kimbo, man. He had skills. Like me and him sparred a lot on Ultimate Fighter. He, he had skills, man. He was he, he was a really skilled dude. Yeah, because you were a Golden Gloves boxing champion. Yeah, point. but Kimbo's he, he he yeah stand up. He was good. Okay, so you you go to the finals. Toughest fat guy in history beats you. Beats me, but I still earn a contract in the UFC. Here we go. Now we're talking. This is the dream. This is the goal. Now is it though? We got a new dream. <laughs> is it, Pat, is it though? We got a new dream. Not really. We got we got we got new a new job, new mission. I'll say that. New okay. Mission. So the supplement door to door was a mission. Now <laughs> supplement door to door try to earn a certain amount where I can move out of my brother's house. That was the mission, not the dream. Get to the UFC. <laughs> Not the dream, but it's a mission. You're here, man. Make the best of it. Don't get beat up. And, you know, try to get famous enough and get out. Okay, and that's what happened. Uh, Mission accomplished. uh, Tom Cruise. (laughs) Bro, (laughs) mission accomplished. I don't know, dude. Because when I was fighting, it was like uh, I just didn't have the experience. And, again, I get launched into this thing. And, you know, I'm fighting these monsters, these guys with 30, 40 fights experience. And, you know, I'm beating some of them, losing some of them. And it's just, I'm terrified. Yeah, but you won a lot more than you lost. For sure, 100%. Mission accomplished. You were a good fighter, dude. Yeah, good okay. fighter. Wasn't world champion. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> now, I hear you. Uh, but that would, that'd that be the mission, you know? No, you, that would be your dream. Not a dream. Wasn't yeah, your mission, dream. you just said it, was to get popular enough to move on. Mission fucking accomplished. Yeah, that's fair. You You're were doing- a good personality. You were you were, had plenty of credibility. Not in the a good octagon. personality in the UFC. So in the UFC, you you if you were a UFC fan, you only knew me through like the the countdowns. So I'm gonna rip this guy's head off and like you know like you have it's so serious. Mm. So you didn't really get to know. So how did how did Rogan uh, become such a fan of yours? Just by talking to you all out of the cage or what? Yeah, we. Uh, uh, him and Brian Callen were really close, and then uh, I would go. Brian, you know, Brian's my best friend, but all of us would always hang out in L.A. and we go to dinners, and I'd tell stories and just make him laugh. And then they were like, "Dude, you, you gotta, you gotta do something with this." And they were Callen and Rogan were kind of the ones that told you, like, "Hey, uh, I think it's probably time to step out of that cage and let's move on." Hundred yeah. percent. And they were the ones that told you, like, "Hey, everything you wanted to do in the UFC, you have done. You've made a good amount of money. Your name pops a little bit now. Let's go ahead and take over, so you get into the podcast world." Is that correct? Uh, I started doing the podcast with Brian while I was fighting. Okay. Um, so me and Brian are doing the fire and the kid while I was fighting. I was just telling people about my experience, stuff like that. And um, it just started to, to, to gain momentum. And then I remember uh, my last fight, I got a check for, for doing my podcast. I got a check for getting beat up. And my check for doing the podcast was way higher. Hilarious. And I was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm done with it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, stand-up comedy has been something you talk about dreaming. This is actual yeah. dream, right? Yeah. Stand-up comedy is yeah. a real dream. Like, ever since you were a kid, you loved uh, the thought of stand-up comedy. Loved the thought of stand-up comedy. Did, never thought I'd be able to do it. My dream was more of Saturday Night Live. You know, uh, something, sketch. That, yeah, something more like that. But um, Still? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the goal would be to host Saturday Night Live, yeah. Be oh, so Saturday. not be a cast member host. Yeah, the cast member's not in, in my... Uh, a wheelhouse but a host for sure yeah why is it on your wheelhouse uh you I mean, those, you're talking about second city trained you know that's yeah I mean, you're talking monsters i mean right? we watch the shows we all watch the shows do we it's uh, the ratings aren't great but yeah it's, yeah there's a reason i think you <laughs> might that's have what we're saying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i see what you're saying yeah yeah i see what you guys are saying yeah yeah um, i actually did watch the shows by the way i love it man it was saturday night before games on sunday it was literally the only thing on tv late night oh yeah and i would watch it every single week and yeah. i would I would just sit there and contemplate retirement each Saturday night. I'm like, I feel like I could probably fucking go do Saturday night live. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's something I could probably do tomorrow. Probably. And that's why we're at where we're at, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but you've loved uh, the stand-up world? Yeah, the whole the whole comedy. Uh, do you have mo- challenges early? In stand-up? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I still have challenges. I don't think, I don't, yeah. What is it? Confidence? Um, no, no, I've never lacked confidence. If it, it, I, I, I believe in myself enough where I'll figure it out, and 
Uh, I'm around the, the literally the best, most talented comics in the world, and I see how they operate. And there's some guys who I can watch and go, oh, I know how he, how he got from point A to point B on that joke. I get that. I can do that. Then I'll watch other guys like a Chris D'Elia or Theo Vaughn or Bill Burr. I'm like, I can't. Uh, that's they're they're aliens. I'm I, I can't do that. But there's certain guys like a uh, like a Burt Kreischer or someone who I, I see his style and how good he's at it. I'm like, well, I can do that. And that and that's kind of what I base my style off of. What an incredible time he is, Burt okay. Kreischer. The best of times. <laughs> he just comes into a room. It's like, all right, it's a tidal wave of party. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's about to happen. Shirts off. Yeah, everybody's he's, just gonna get fucked up here. I think <laughs> there's only one Burt Kreischer. I love Burt. That's legit. Yeah. He yeah. came in here at like 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and he's like, all right. Here for the party. Yeah. <laughs> Took a shirt and for off. two hours. Right over there. He's, he's the best, man. Middle just of winter. Like warm natty lights just because yep. that's all we had. But he was he was going to do it. Warm he was determined light. to have a good time. As long as there's alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> he was determined. I, I think that's a great way. He was determined to have a good time. It's no. his thing. Yeah. Like, a good time's his thing. You live in uh, Hollywood now? Live in Hollywood, man. Well, I work in Hollywood. I just moved out of Hollywood. Had a place in Santa Monica. But I've, I have a kid, man. So it's too busy there. So I had to get out. So I moved. I'm, I'm me and Bert, or me, Bert, Segura, Rogan, some other cut. We kind of live outside of the area. Man, you just name dropped a lot of people. Right there. <laughs> Those are my friends. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I apologize. I, <laughs> Who's somebody you met living out there that was much cooler than you could have ever imagined? You're like, you know what? I met insert name here. Thought they were a raging douchebag. Turns out, no, cool dude. Uh, I, I never assume anyone's a douchebag. Um, really? No. Never? Never. I, I just, just, yeah, never. If they're a comic, I assume they hate me. Is that because... <laughs> Yeah, me too. Yeah, I just assume they hate me. Is it so because like, oh. on Ultimate Fighter you got edited into looking like a dick where you said fuck that guy, so now you just have the thought that anybody who's potentially a douchebag has been edited into look like a douchebag? Maybe, but but also everyone's judged off social media, but that's not real. Also, that's like it's like politics. Like there, there, there's these outcries, and people think that's the narrative, but those are the extreme. So on on social media, that's the extreme. So I don't base anything off those opinions. Oh. So I wait till I meet them. So uh, who's somebody that surprised you? No one surprised me, but um, Will Smith was awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, we knew my it. My guy. We knew it. Will Smith is my guy. Will Smith is amazing. Coolest dude ever. <laughs> ever. I thought so too. I've great. never met him. You've I've never met him. Don't start. Excuse me. I've been following him on Instagram. I feel like I know him. I feel like I know me everything too, about right? him. I, you, you know what's funny about Will Smith too? Is he <laughs> you guys so, just talked about how fake it is. Excuse and how me. How it's the extreme. Well, no, hold on. Excuse me. He what, hates what, Will Smith. Oh, you hate Will Smith? I hate him. I, can't, I think he's corny. Bro. You think he's corny? Yeah. Bro, he, who, who do you like? Exactly. Who do, like? who do you like? Great question. Jeff Bridges, Christian Bale. Those are guys I like. Sounds a little Different racist, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds pretty white Jesus to me. Christ. Sounds pretty racist, doesn't it? Easy. No one in here? Easy. Fucking, hey, listen. Easy. Fucking two-term Trump over hey, here. Sorry, oh, yeah. sorry, racist. Denzel Washington. I like Denzel. Oh, oh no. Okay. Don't go oh, back there. Oh, yeah. Oh, Kevin no. Hart. Oh, yeah. Oh, Kevin Hart. Martin Lawrence. Eddie Murphy. I love Martin Lawrence. Okay. Hilarious. Uh, yeah, but Will Smith, um, you, no, you, he's but, killing it. Don't worry about. I like I like how Will Smith, you know, because people on YouTube and Instagram they think they're funny or think they're talented. These Instagrammers are just YouTubers. And then when Will Smith goes, "Oh, this is what everyone wants to look at." Oh, cool. Let me get my talents on it. And then you watch his page, like, "Oh, fuck, yeah, take they're, over." They're, yeah. <laughs> just took over the internet. He's a real talented dude. Yeah, yeah actually talented. talented. So he's like, "Oh, oh, this is what we'll focus on." Yeah, check this. Is how you do it. Grammys, yeah. Emmys. He's the best. All of them. He's got everything. So talented. So we, you met Will Smith? Met Will Smith, man. Burt Kreischer tells a story when he, when he met Will Smith. It was in a urinal, and Will Smith was about to tell him the secret to success, but his piss stream was so strong he couldn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so he, I tell you what, man, the key to this whole thing, and they started pissing, and, he, and then he goes, all right, good luck. And Burt was like, I missed it. <laughs> Did, didn't wash his hands either. <laughs> he didn't have to. I, um, by the way, I would hope to shake his hand after that. Get a little. Yeah, bit I'm trying to think. The, the only other guy I was at uh, SB party night. I was uh, talking to someone, and uh, a waiter's come through. I go to back up, and I back up into Tom Cruise. Uh -huh. but I, I How just, big? I turn around. I was like, dude, you. Oh shit! It's Tom Cruise. <laughs> How big? Uh, not big. Five three. Uh, I, he probably had some heels on. I'd say he's five eight. Oh, heels with five eight. He had some thick shoes on. So what's in real life then? God, five, five, five six. 
five six. He's listed at five six, so maybe it's real. So wow. Maybe it's we thought it was a Hollywood doctor there. Yeah. Five six. I don't know. He had some shoes on, but it's fucking paid. He's larger than life, though. It's do Tom Cruise, dude. Do you enjoy uh, action flicks? Are you a big Tom Cruise fan, or what is your style of movie you watch? Uh, no, like I won't see like Hobbs and whatever the fuck it is. Like I, I don't go Hobbs to, like, and Shaw. I don't. I don't go to that stuff. He doesn't need you. It's a world premiere. He's got China. Yeah, <laughs> The Rock's gonna make a billion dollars off of China. Oh no, I'm well aware because he he's it. jumping out of a building at one point, and China's like, oh, we love that. No, I know. Oh, you don't like The Rock? No, I like oh, The Rock. That's, oh, that's interesting. No, I that's like The Rock. I like The Rock. <laughs> you guys love The Rock? I like him better than Will Smith. Brendan, excuse me. Please. I see that. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think he did all the steroids in that, or what do you think he did? <laughs> <laughs> all the iron, all the steroids. Uh, I'm a fan, dude. But he makes so much money worldwide. That's like their new thing, by the way. If you watch any of The Rock's operations, he always makes sure he plugs in worldwide so he doesn't oh. care about the domestic numbers because he knows that the domestic numbers are going to be down. China, baby. China is everything. China loves explosions. Mm-hmm. One-legged guys jumping mm. out of buildings. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't do it for me, man. I mean, it does for me. He's a rock. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. You like documentaries? Love them. Okay. Obviously. Seen them all. What good you friend got? of yours, Rogan, did the Lazar thing. How do you feel about it? So, oh, wait a minute. That was a deep guess. You don't believe Lazar? You think he's a liar? You think this whole thing's fake? Wait a oh. fucking minute. On record, you're saying that? I, I think L- Lazar's full of shit. Why? Is it because his guy Jeremy was with him and tried to out Rogan that, Rogan? That guy Jeremy was completely full of shit. Hey, he <laughs> he should have never been on there. Him trying to out Rogan Rogan at the one point after he had the glass of whiskey was awesome. That was oh, my favorite dude, part of the that, whole thing. That guy ruined the thing. I, 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 I don't <laughs> only talk like four times. <laughs> a lot of people were tweeting me like, oh, if it wasn't for the bearded fuck, that would have been the best thing. That guy should just shut the fuck up. I, I like Lazar. I, but when when so I didn't look anything into it. I'm, I'm not a big alien guy, conspiracy guy. So when I went into it and I was like, oh, this is dope. I was like, this is dope. And I was like, there's fucking aliens. Yeah. There's aliens. This guy's worked on them, dude. This <laughs> right is nuts. There. Yeah. Right there. Right there. So uh, I get done and then I was still convinced for about two or three days. But then people start sending me like articles and all this stuff. And you look more into no, it. No, you don't read those. Uh, you're just going to fully buy it? Propaganda, bro. That's propaganda. Yeah, I don't read those articles. I, I got them sent to me as well. I just I read, them. To read them. I read them, man. Because I, I don't know that laser guy, like a lot of stuff he says doesn't really fall, doesn't track where he went to school. Oh, it's because the government was trying to ruin him. Yeah, I guess, man. <laughs> I guess. And he's the Brendan, only- Brendan, you're more the- woke than this, bro. Uh, I'm woke on some things. You are more woke than this. You, you believe uh, Lazar? I just well, believe in aliens. I though. know he had a high level job in that industry, so he had to go to school somewhere. So the fact that they can't find any education history on him at all he is had a little to be weird. Educated by somebody. You don't just take somebody's word on it that they're. And there's a, a newspaper chemist. article about him working at that Los Alamos post that they say they never worked there. Yeah, I no, listen. So I, I think some of it. You yeah. know, I don't know yeah, where I'm at. Real bro, I'd be more impressed if he was I, that I, good of a liar. That's what I said too. I would love him if he. Yeah, was- like I feel like Rogan, pretty good at uh, dissecting somebody and picking them apart. I felt like, aside from the migraine thing, that that uh, was strange. <laughs> Thirty-five <laughs> minutes in. <laughs> well, no, but all the like you'd like. So, what exactly the alien looked like? You're like, God damn, uh, my head hurts, migraine, dude. I, uh, I'm trying to remember. I'm sorry. What were we talking about? So, anyways, when I was in New Mexico, I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, un- shady. Unacknowledged is another documentary you could watch. What's that one about? Aliens. Well, you know, I'm all in on the aliens. Dude. All out on the Bigfoot. All in on the aliens. All out on Bigfoot. Dude, documentaries that get me, man. I'll watch them. I feel like an expert, and I will fucking drop some knowledge. What's your favorite? <laughs> we had a friend who became a vegan. Oh, I'm sure. He watched one documentary, and he became a fucking vegan. I can see that. That's why I don't watch those. That yep, me vegan. neither. Just like those articles you're talking about that are uh, discrediting Bob Lazar. <laughs> I just don't read them. I just stick away from them. That doesn't fit my narrative. I like my life right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Uh, I'm trying to think of the last night. Do you watch uh, I Love You Now Die? Mm. No, I've seen it. I haven't oh, sat down to watch. Is it like Dateline? You watch it. It's a two-part series, and when you first watch it, uh, they, you know, so what, basically what happened? She was dating this. When I say dating, they had just uh, like a a fling. Uh, uh, well, not even a fling. They only met like three times, but then they started dating. They basically had a phone relationship. Yeah, they were oh. texting. They just like text those. each other. They weren't around. Those are fun. Those yeah, are fun. Yeah, so they're not around. Um, <laughs> so. He was manic depressive, uh, wanted to commit suicide. And oh, I did see it. this. And she talks him into committing suicide. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she goes on trial for murder. Mm-hmm. 
It's uh-huh. a but the first part you're like, oh this she sucks. I was like, give her life, fuck that girl. But then you watch the second part and they dive into the the dude. You're like, oh my god, yeah, she helped him out. <laughs> she fucking helped him out. <laughs> you're on her side, Doctor Kavorkin over here. <laughs> yeah, she's great. You're on her side. A little bit, a little bit, because the kid he's he, he he attempted suicide four times. It's all he talked about. Yeah, because some of her texts were like shit talking him that he couldn't successfully kill himself. Right? Yeah. Aren't she like, oh, are you finally do it this time? Like that type of stuff. Yeah. It, she she has problems, no doubt. Is she in jail now? Don't no spoiler. Well, okay, I mean, this happened in 2014, so I mean, snooze. It's not a spoiler. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So she she, she went Skip to prison. Ahead. She went to prison for how long? Uh, I think a year and a half, 15 months. She's out now, though. Yes. Her and Casey Anthony need to just fuck oh, the tag team dudes. That'd be a great podcast. Mm-hmm. You know what? Right. That sounds fair, to be honest. A year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said. I think that's fair. You don't that's know the fair. fucking. You don't know the story. You didn't. I watch just this? heard it. I just, I mean, that's basically it. I mean, we know the story. Huh? We haven't seen the documentary. We know the story. No, I gave you the rundown. I've okay. got to watch this now. I don't understand how you can get convicted of helping. Did you see the someone, text messages? But she literally told him, like, yep, this is what you're no, going to do. So, so he put. So if I tell you, mate, you should go rob that bank, then I'm going to go to jail for a accessory. conspiracy. Correct. Because you didn't not, share it with doesn't the fit the elements of the law. No, it does, though. That was the argument. You got to watch the doc, brother. You're off. <laughs> so the thing is, he was a cop for 21 yeah. years. No, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But you that was a long time ago. I saw the doc. I saw the doc. <laughs> He'll drop some fucking knowledge. I saw the doc, all right? The doc went to argue law in Boston? I saw the doc. Um, yeah, that was their argument. They go, well, if this kid wanted to jump off a bridge and she walks by and goes, do it, should she go to jail? Because he was going to do it anyways. Mm-hmm. The answer Great is yes. Defense. Yes, the answer is yes. Really? Oh, no, I, no I'm, I'm just saying. She had a bad lawyer. She had yeah, a really good. Only. Here's the thing, though. The kid goes into the car, right? And he he uh, put the the toxins into the car. The mm-hmm. exhaust in the car. That's how he commits in a garage, right? Good way to do no, it. No, in a, a Walmart parking lot. Shout out to Walmart. So he. Um, I don't think they want that shout out. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know their demographic. <laughs> I am the demographic. <laughs> shout out to Hassan's joke. So they uh, he closes the door. And he's texting like, I'm going to do it. And he gets scared and gets out of the car. And then the next text he gets from her, it, she goes, get the fuck back in that car. Jesus. And he got back in the car. Oh, wow. And then, and then he died. Yeah, it's not like it was just one text either, right? No, was like, like she was sending multiple, like over oh, different long a, periods of time. She should get into motivation. Yeah, she's fucking Lou Holtz coaching. <laughs> yeah, That's what I, you, you got the Tony Robbins of suicide here. She's fucking. <laughs> she's good, she was good. You got to watch it though. But I, yeah. yeah, documentaries. That's my shit, man. Have you ever you, been involved in one of those situations where a crime's about to happen or a crime happens? So we have this gas station right back here. Oh. It's the most... Uh, I was wondering where you're going. This like, what? Well, this, How much research did you do? So I, I didn't do enough, obviously, but there's a gas station right back here we go to. It's a one-stop shop convenience store. You can buy vapes in there and everything. You know, Love it's one it. of those gas stations. Yeah. Terrible part of town. I mean, it's a bad... It's got the glass in front of the, the person. You got to dip the money in underneath. We're in a bad part of town right now? Oh, yeah. yeah there's a yeah. meth clinic right across the street there. Yeah. But like one block down, it's good. One block down, you're good, though. It's a library. You're, you're good. But this part of town, <laughs> not great. So know. every time you go over there, there's a chance something's going to pop off. Yeah. And I always want to be on surveillance camera in the middle of it. I want to be the guy in a surveillance camera, like in the background. I watch yeah. a lot of Dateline, you know? Yeah, like, I love that. Yeah, too. yeah. Like this yeah. guy says that this happened. Yeah. yeah I always want to be that guy. Yeah. Two weeks ago, we walked in there. A guy walks in, fixes his gun on his strap. I'm like, oh, fuck, here it's happening. I like, <laughs> I sneak in in front of him. Like, it's I want to be in the room. You want to be in the shot. Yes. I yes. would like to be in the shot. Maybe spear him, too. You know, like, something cool. Yeah, something yeah. cool. And he just goes, he goes to the side of the counter, too. I'm like, fuck, it's happening. Ask to go to the bathroom. And you, if they were watching surveillance camera, it's me like sitting there just like staring at him. <laughs> <laughs> just staring at him. What are you do it? He takes a piss and leaves with his gun. And I was That's like, God boring. Damn Come on, it. dude. Has any Live that, a little, man. Has anything ever happened to you where you've stunted a, a crime in process or been a part of a cool surveillance camera? No, never. What's your diet? Um, oh God, dude! I you sh- have that food sh- truck show. Pretty I good show. With it, thank you. Thank Pretty you. good show. Thanks, brother. We don't have enough food trucks out here. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I was thinking maybe you could do it. Just do the same one every time. <laughs> yeah, but in L.A., it's I'm like just spitballing. I feel like L.A. is food truck capital of the world. L.A. is food truck, and right where my my studios are at, there's so many food trucks. What I'm, studio is that? In Santa Monica, I run, have- I run all three shows out of Santa Monica. Really? Yep. That's where... That's where Below the Belt for Showtime, Firing the Kid, and King the Sting is. Really? Yes, who owns sir. the studios? Uh, this, this Malka, who produces all the stuff. Really? Yep. So all those uh, those shows are all coming out of the same spot. 
I thought they were in Rogan's compound. They're not. Oh no, Mm-mm. really? Mm-mm. I'm wrong. It's our spot, that. brother. You yeah. guys have your own spot in Santa Monica. Yeah, it's not like this, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, I you got a great spot, man. Got a good basketball court. You got a great spot. You're doing it right. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. Thanks. Man. Hey, good for me. Good for you, <laughs> Did you hear what just happened to me? Good compliment there from you. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> so you don't have a diet of any sort. You just kind of. Uh, I, I I I yo-yo diet, man. I'm. I'm oh, oh yeah, me too. Yeah. Like I'm. Uh, I'm so hardcore on a diet, and then I being on the road sucks, man. I don't like, know how la- you do it. La- not not. It sucks as far as if you want to be on a diet, because when I if I'm in L.A., my schedule. I'm so strict. Wake up every morning with my son. Work out after he goes to school. I'm on my diet. I'm fasting. I'm going to bed on time. Doing my sets at night. I'm good. But then when I get on the road, it's like, I, well, I got to try St. Elmo's. I got to try. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got to. If I'm in Philly, I got to try the cheesesteak. If I'm in New York, got to have pizza. Have to. So my diet goes to crap on the road, man. So you, you just don't eat? think I would, yeah. What is your diet whenever you're at home? Uh, you sh- uh, keto. You're a keto diet guy. Keto kid, yeah. I got some cookies for you to try. We're about to take the market. Oh, yeah? Keto. Are you, you're a keto guy? Oh, yeah. Really? Are yeah. you keto right now? Why'd you just look at me like that? <laughs> I, just, <laughs> no, I like the tank top. Me. You, no, I I, me. no, you look good, man. Thanks, I appreciate it. Did you ever get thick after you retired? Oh, yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> you got real thick? I was like 260, 270 at one point. I feel you, dude. Yeah, it was easy. It was easy to get that, like that. That's where, I, dude, yeah. You're a keto guy. Uh, well, I got I'll, cookies for you to try. I'll take them. They're about to go to market. Do you do you, do you, you do keto? You want to be like shredded? Yeah, I know. But I stick with the keto for like uh, two weeks. I start looking good. And I'm like, you deserve. That's how I am. I'm like, dude, <laughs> dude, you did it. You did it. Look at yeah. you. You look good. <laughs> and I eat a pizza. And yep. I eat it. That's exactly. And then that pizza leads into like frosted mini wheats, which then leads into a nap, which leads into waking up. Like, I oh, might as well have a cinnamon roll too. We've already <laughs> wasted this 24 hours. And then it just carries into the next day. And it's like, God damn it. I'm fat again. I think I'm an addict. Yeah. A food. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me too. Like if you're a drug addict, it's easy. You can Don't do drugs. You don't have to do drugs. You have to eat. Yeah. yeah. It's a problem. Man. Yeah. And your taste buds have a real opinion. On a regular basis. They know what they like. I played with guys that hated eating, and I've never been more jealous of people. What? I wish I had that, man. They, yeah, they, they have to force feed rare. themselves. They have to force feed themselves to keep their weight on. They don't like eating. Oh. They don't like food. They don't enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, maybe if you're just pounding Adderall all day, but come on. No, they're, Naturally they're, like that. That's insane. Yeah, there are people that's like that. Yeah, there's a lot of people. Like, I've, met, I've met more than 10 people that have been like that throughout my entire career. Oh, yeah, I know some people like that. Yeah, they hate eating. I'm like, God, I am so God, fucking so jealous. Because if a pizza walks by me right now and it looks anywhere near good, it's on. I don't know how I'm supposed to say no to that dollar slice of pizza right me there. Neither. It's so good. I can't do it. That's because we're from America. You think? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Too it's many good. options. This is it's America. It's a real problem, man. It is. So are you on keto right now? I mean... I had a potato last night. You know, I was, you on, can't have I was on keto before I got here. That's a healthy starch. Yeah. No, yeah, it's yeah. not. It's, it's you, that's starch. the other thing. That's the other thing. That's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> Trust me. I, I'm like, I'll work it off in the morning. Full of good. that. Full of those. Are you in the middle of a tour right now, or are you just always on the road? Uh, my The real tour starts uh, 2020, but I mean, I'm kind of on a tour. Yeah. So right now you're piecing together your I'm set. I'm trying to piece together stuff, because I shot my special in January, so I have a new like- f- How long have you been working on that set that you did in January? For the special, two and a half years, three years. Holy fuck, two and a half, three years of piecing years. that together. Yeah, but that this, this, the 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 meat of that is special. The last half an hour, where how I went from the UFC to stand up, which also aired on County Central. That 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 story's three and a half years, four years. That was the that was the base of everything. How many uh, times do you work a, a week doing comedy at the comedy store? If you, I'm in LA, yeah, I'm at the comedy store, Improv or Laugh Factory. Um, I mean. I'm doing probably six, seven sets a week at least. Holy fuck. Yeah. yeah. I'm full time gig, man. Yeah. And then I'm on the road, you know, I'm at, on the road every month from here to, I think, 2022, at least two weekends a month, if not three. Let's go. Let's go, bro. Go take over the world. Try, man. Get you a stadium like Kevin Hart. I know. That's, <laughs> that's the goal, isn't it? Hell yeah, it is. That's the goal. That'd be cool. I don't know how you guys do it. We talk about this on a regular basis. Todd and I, Todd has done a lot more stand-up comedy than me, but Todd always had another job and then did stand-up on the side. I obviously, same thing. I don't know how the comedians do it. I don't know how you guys do it do over and over again. Well, just the, the same story? Yeah, I get bored. I told the same story, what, three times in a row on this it. last tour, and by the third night, I was like, yep, I'm ready to fucking stop talking about this forever. I think that's an athlete thing, too, because I, I get bored. Of, I feel like I get bored of my material faster than the other comics. 
Um, by the time I shot my special, that story that I told on Comedy Central and and on Showtime, man, that was I. I knew that was a, I don't ever want to touch it. I don't want to <laughs> see it. <laughs> when I did that. I'm like, I don't ever want to hear any of this ever again. Ever. But it, but it is. I forget who told me this. They gave um. They gave the metaphor that a joke or a story is like a little baby. It's never, yeah. That you kind of have to nurture and you kind of build it up. And then whenever it finally becomes the adult, it's like, okay, now it's time to put it onto a special. And then you kind of let it go forever. And that was kind of an interesting thing to me because I never viewed it that way. I always viewed it as, oh, this is a funny story. I'm going to tell you with some passion and energy. And then the next time I tell it, probably not going to be delivered as good. I'm going to be honest. I don't like <laughs> it as much as I did yesterday. And then and so on and so on and so on. And that's kind of my problem. That's why I do it like, once a year, two times a year, because it just feels fresh to me. I don't know how you guys do it. Yeah, but if it's your passion, you would, because that's that story. So, like, I tried a new bit last night, which I've never done before. If you get some last, I'm like, oh shit, it's a seed. So, like, oh, I'm going to go work on that. Mm -hmm. And I punch it up. And then next night, oh shit, it got even better. How much stuff will you practice in front of audiences? Uh, especially right now, a, a good amount. I mess around in, in between. Like, I, like uh, we call it making a shit sandwich. So, that the, the top, Stuff I know it works at the end. No, it works in the middle. I can mess around, and I know my spots where if it's not going well, I can pull this out and go to that. It's a science out there. Mm -hmm. You guys at the comedy store really do good stuff on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you talked about if it's a comedian, uh, you just automatically assume that they hate you. Oh yeah. You want to expand on that a little bit? Because uh, and I, yeah, I guess I just you know uh, I, I didn't come in like tr like a traditional comic you know I'm, and you know I'm at the comedy store a lot or I'm at the Improv or the Ice House you know or selling out the Wilbur I have a special on Showtime being Comedy Central so it's like you know, puh, puh, puh. <laughs> you know if, that's if, name drop that's right. I, enjoy, I respect it uh, I like it I just want to let you know that okay. that, that's a thing I do oh I was reading Wikipedia um, <laughs> no so I just uh, <laughs> <laughs> no I. Uh, uh, you know, if, if you're if you're a grinder like a comic who hasn't made it, or you, you know you did make it, but it took you 17 years to get to a certain level, you know, I just assume like, dude, fuck this guy, man. You know, I paid my dues in a different way. You know, but well, that's uh, that's the, the reason I asked is because Pat went through the exact same thing here. Like, and it's just ridiculous to me. I mean, I was a comedian. I'm like, I, I don't give a fuck. Anybody that can get up there and be funny. Here, here's the thing. Who gives a fuck? You and plus, you bring a story. It's not your fault you have an amazing, more amazing story than someone who who didn't do shit with their life. Yeah, different yeah. perspective. Yeah, 100%. I agree, and I get it. I don't know if that will ever leave. Maybe if I get past at the store one day, I'll feel like I belong, but um, I don't know. I thought the special might make me feel better, but it didn't. <laughs> Made me feel worse. Because you got it instead of somebody else. Mm hmm you need to stop feeling bad about yourself, Drew. Mission accomplished <laughs> in fighting. Mission accomplished in football. You got free schooling. You got a chance to taste the NFL. Hell yeah. Mission accomplished in lacrosse. Your team was good in college. Yeah. I think you should stop being so hard on yourself, dude. Yeah, maybe, man. I don't know. Now, granted, you, you are looking a little fat after that potato last night. <laughs> Do I look thick? Yeah. yeah. You, you walked in here and I was like. dysmorphia, bro. You walked in. I was like, you know what? I thought he'd be in better shape. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I gotta get back on keto. <laughs> I got cookies for you. Monday, uh, Monday, man. Where's uh, next city you're at so people can buy tickets? Uh, this year's next week. Tuesday, yeah. I'm in Nashville, Portland. We got a big Nashville market. I Dude, love really Nashville. Like... Zanies. I'm at Zanies, oh. one of my favorite clubs. Nashville's the best. The best. Nashville. I'm there first week of, I think, August 1 through the 3rd. I'm in Nashville. Uh, I go Nashville. And then uh, I'm in Portland, and then Houston, Denver. Oh, those are all close to each other. That's yeah, nice. those are all very easy trips. It's going to be great. Yeah, back <laughs> Den to Denver, hometown, man. Haven't done a full weekend in Denver. Oh, that's maybe, nice. Hey, maybe you should fight somebody. Take it back to that 36-second fight. You know what I mean? Hey, Mom, check it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if he's in your town, go check him out. Hilarious and cool dude. And I think you should stop being so hard on yourself. Incredibly successful and fun to watch on the internet and in real life. Thanks, brother. No problem. I'm just trying to keep up with you, man. No, no, no. I'm I'm just a whittling away retired punter no, don't, in see, the middle don't of America. Don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I sell 6,000 tickets at places. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking asshole. Uh, incredible hat. It's one of my favorite hats I've ever seen in my oh, life. Oh, thanks, brother. And you, I saw the bit you put on the internet about you being a fuckboy. Yes, super fuckboy. Hype boy. Two chains on right now. Great chains. Thanks, man. I do have two chains. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's listening to this, they're like, I fucking hate this guy. And, there, and there's a Rolex, I think, on the left hand, which is incredible looking. When I was saying- Daddy the, makes money, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the Alvin- Daddy's on the road all the time for free? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're incredible. And I appreciate uh, two guys you brought along with you are good people, too. Take yeah, Hassan and Derek people. are killers, man. Yeah, they're great. Those are my guys. Hassan and Derek? Hassan and Derek. Hassan and Derek. Our, our, we're, they're going to go on tour with me uh, in 2020 next year. We're doing all theaters, and we're calling it um, Fifty Shades of Brown. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Great name. Can't wait to watch it. Ladies and gentlemen, Brendan Shaw.